Good morning. I'm just going to give uh, people a few moments to uh, come on as uh, people can uh, be notified that the Facebook Live is starting. So we'll just uh, have a few moments before I can begin the announcements uh, for our morning prayer. Well, welcome to morning prayer. Uh, you have a, a bulletin in front of you that was posted um, to the uh, Facebook uh, group account and uh, will be posted, of course, on our church website as well. Uh, before we begin prayer, I just uh, wanted to go through this a little bit. I had shared last week that I desired to uh, share something a little bit different uh, regarding morning and evening prayer during the season of Lent. And the document that is front of in front of you is provided from the ELCA. It's titled Morning Prayer, A Simplified Form. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is this, uh, as I had noted in the instructions when I posted the bulletin, if you have a Bible there with you, I would ask that you have it in front of you. Um, what I normally do is provide everything for you to follow on the uh, worship document. But uh, I really think it's important to have access to our Bibles and to open those up and to use them. So there will be two readings that I will um, I'll give them to you now uh, so you can have those ready to go. Uh, the first reading today is going to be from Job chapter 5, verses 8 through 27. So you may have to look uh, up in your Bible index where the book of Job is. That's fine. So the book of Job, chapter 5, verses 8 through 27. And then our um, reading from the New Testament will be 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 18. So 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 18. Uh, I will be reading from the uh, New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. If you don't have that, that's fine. Sometimes it's interesting to hear somebody read from a different Bible and then you're following along in a different translation and you'll notice where the differences are. So that bears an awful lot of fruit as well. Uh, on our worship bulletin, there are parts that are bolded that uh, just like in normal morning and evening prayer, you will respond. The two differences are this. For the psalmody, Psalm 100, although it's not bolded, I would ask that we read that in unison. And then the gospel canticle as well. It's not bolded, but I ask that we read that in, in unison. Uh, a reminder of our Lenten schedule. Tomorrow, Wednesday, we will um, have our worship service in person and on Facebook Live at 12.05 followed by a Bible study at 1250 in person and on Facebook Live. And then all those will be available um, on YouTube channel and our webpage uh, immediately after in uploading. And then I would like to remind you, this is a, a very handy resource that the church provide, the Word in Season. Um, many of you have been able to pick this up, but if you've not picked it up, I really highly commend to have this, especially for families on their tables uh, you read from it in the evening or the morning, and that's how faith uh, is nurtured at home. So I apologize for the lengthy announcements, but I want to make sure that we're all on the same page this morning. So welcome to morning prayer. We'll have a moment of silence. We have our candle lit, and um, I'll be ringing the bell, and we will begin. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy Trinity, one God, who gives us life and salvation and resurrection. We will read in unison um, Psalm 100. Come, let us sing to the Lord. 
Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before God's presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to the Lord with psalms. For you, Lord, are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also yours. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For the Lord is our God, and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. first reading this day is a rather lengthy one, uh, but we've read lengthy readings before. It comes from Job chapter 5, verses 8 through 27. As for me, I would seek God, and to God I would commit my cause. He does great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number. He gives rain on the earth. He sends waters on the fields. He sets on high those who are lowly, and those who mourn are lifted to safety. He frustrates the devices of the crafty so that their hands achieve no success. He takes the wise in their own craftiness, and the schemes of the wily are brought to a quick end. They meet with darkness in the daytime, and grope at noonday as in the night. But he saves the needy from the sword of their mouth, from the hand of the mighty, so the poor have hope and injustice shuts its mouth. How happy is the one whom God reproves. Therefore, do not despise the discipline of the Almighty, for he wounds but binds up. He strikes, but his hands heal. He will deliver you from six troubles. In seven, no harm shall touch you. In famine, he will redeem you from death, and in war from the power of the sword. You shall be hidden from the scourge of the tongue, and shall not fear destruction when it comes. At destruction and famine you shall laugh, and shall not fear the wild animals of the earth. For you shall be in league with the stones of the field, and the wild animals shall be at peace with you. You shall know that your tent is safe. You shall inspect your fold and miss nothing. You shall know that your descendants will be many and your offspring like the grass of the earth. You shall come to your grave in ripe old age, as a shock of grain comes up to the threshing floor in its season. See, we have searched this out, it is true. Hear, and know it for yourself. Our second reading today, if you flip to uh, First Peter, and you can use that index if you do not currently have it marked. It will be reading from 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, verses 8 through 18. So 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 18. I wish you were in front of me so I could hear the rustling of your Bibles. This is titled, A Suffering for Doing What is Right. Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love for one another, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or abuse for abuse, but on the contrary, repay with a blessing. It is for this that you were called, that you might inherit a blessing. For those who desire life and desire to see good days, let them keep their tongues from evil and their lips from speaking deceit. Let them turn away from evil and do good. Let them seek peace and pursue it, for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to 
make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct, conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets, but in these last days, God spoke to us in his Son. I'd now like to share with you a, a reflection and a meditation on the uh, First Peter passage this morning. Christian writer Valerie Anderson correctly states that suffering and harm are not the most popular topics for us in perhaps discussing within the church, especially within the Christian life. We all understand uh, our desire for instant gratification, or if not that, just simple peace and rest and quiet. And so it's not easy to seriously consider the idea that there is merit in facing difficulties and hardships for the sake of an idea or belief. Now, depending on when one dates this letter of 1 Peter, the situation referred to in 1 Peter chapter 3 could range from mild abuse to mockery at the hands of families of these new Christ believers. But it could also mean this open, official, and harsh persecution by the Roman officials. So knowing a little something then about the context of this letter, the hearers of 1 Peter had to prepare themselves for the consequences of what they believed. And so Peter gives several strategies to encourage his listeners to being willing to suffer for their faith. The first strategy employs is to get the Christ believers to focus on the future, both theirs and for the ones who are attacking them. Our reading today has a strong end times influence, and even if the Christ believers experience difficulties in the days ahead, they should be assured that not only will they gain future rewards, but those who attack them will be punished. The language of blessing and the fact of those who are attacking the Christ believers will be put to shame gives this passage of strong end times flavor. Being blessed happens in the end times for those who have followed God's will even in times of suffering. And knowing that one's suffering is not in vain is meant to give endurance for those who believe in Christ. The second strategy that Peter employs in this letter is to remind his listeners of the tools and the resources that are available to them as they can defend their faith in respectful and honest ways and to be encouraged and strengthened in their faith. Peter reminds them that they have the necessary intellectual tools to take on those who might challenge them. Their faith might be mocked by others and derided as irrational, especially in times of suffering. But the Christ believers have tools and resources to give a reasonable and rational account of what it is that they believe. Because of the assurance that the ultimate reward is not dependent upon them, the Christ believers can defend their beliefs with integrity. But they need not be aggressive or, or mean, as they can share the gospel in love. The third idea and strategy that Peter employs is to give the listeners the comfort and the knowledge that Christ himself had suffered. The author of 1 Peter uses Christ as an example that suffering can be the path of the faithful, as the story of Christ presents two comforts for the Christ believers. It helps those to understand that being righteous and obedient to God's will does not automatically provide protection against pain and suffering. And I know that we have discovered this within our own lives. But in his perfect obedience, Christ suffered and died, 
which for those who are currently suffering, those who suffer this morning, those who suffer right now, hear this gospel. That we learn from Jesus' suffering that suffering, your suffering, does not mean or to be seen as a sign of God's perhaps displeasure or anger towards you, but rather, as we heard this past Sunday, that as Jesus was baptized, a voice comes from heaven. You are my beloved son and daughter. To know that in your suffering, that you are always beloved. And I believe that this reframing, this deeper understanding of why it is that we suffer has, I think, a helpful and very hopeful dimension for our lives as we are invited then during the season of Lent in our times of wilderness to reflect on the place of suffering in the lives of one another. Perhaps because we are not being persecuted directly for our faith as was happening within Peter's time, suffering for us is our sickness and our battles with declining health along with being willing to renounce certain things in the name of our Christian faith. Perhaps it means taking time away from other activities that one may enjoy in order to serve Jesus through the church. Or perhaps it means accepting the rewards of the Christian life may not be immediate in the forms of money or more friends or better health or a better status or job, but but the better life comes because one gives preeminence to one's accountability to God rather than the world. Maybe suffering means pushing against the ways of the world in order to create a more just, loving, and serving community as we all await for Jesus to bring us into the fullness of the kingdom of God. Amen. We read in unison the Song of Zechariah. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets you promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. We now share our prayers on this morning. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially, we take this time to thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the new creation in Christ and all the gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gifts of relationships with others. And for the communion of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world Heal the hurts of all of your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially, we pray this morning for those who govern the nations, for the peoples and countries ravaged by strife or warfare, for all who work for peace and international harmony. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. 
for the church of Jesus in every land. And for those many, many people this morning that are in need of deep healing and hope, we offer those names before you now. Lori, Linda, Jack, Jack. Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor become in adversity, overcome in adversity. In all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together as we share the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. It was good to be here with you today and to share these beautiful words, hopeful words, and encouraging words in Christ. So, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us. Amen.